Mishmash. Painting tutorial. Hey everyone, it's me Mishmash, and we're back again, this time with a proper painting tutorial like I said I would. And today we're going to be looking at the Iron Squat Prospector Necromunda fellas. And uh, we're going to be painting this one as one of my favorite classes from Deep Rock Galactic, The Gunner. Probably because he's really easy to play. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to not talk too much and we're just going to get right into it. Let's go. So we're going to start out with our mini all nice and zenithal primed. And we're going to base coat his armor with Caliban Green. Make sure to shake your paints real nice before application and add a little bit of water to make the paint flow nice. We're gonna go over this twice as per usual and it'll give us a strong starting point for our little guy here. Don't be too afraid to get paint around in other areas that are already primed. This guy is gonna be dirty, so it's okay to go back and paint over it again if you really need to. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Also make sure not to run your brush over things that are already drying. That's a good way to really smudge the paint job and you'll have to go over it again. And also make sure not to have any crumbs or bubbles. That can actually affect the paint job a lot more than you think. Just be nice and use your brush and move it in the same way that you're doing all around the miniature. It tends to look a lot better when you don't use strokes that are against the grain. Alrighty, and now that we've gone over twice with Caliban Green, we now have a strong defined color across the armor. Now we're going to go over all the metallic areas using a combo of Baden Black and Vallejo Black ink. I purposely mix these two together as the ink is already a strong tone in its own right, so mixing these two together will get a nice flowy black. We'll also be left with a nice little natural highlight afterwards, so I think it's a pretty good combination. If you want to go a little further, just go over this combination together and then go over with a bat and black to finish it off. Now I didn't capture it on camera, but make sure to add just a little bit of this combination to the gloves and cover the arms fully. This will provide a great undercoat for colors to come. Next, we're going to speckle some Elvic Flesh from Vallejo Game Color onto his boots. It isn't too big a deal if a little bit of the Caliban Green is visible, and like I said, this guy is going to be dirtied up, so it's more than possible to use this darker undercoat to your advantage. Once we've applied a thin layer of our Elvic Flesh, we're going to go over this Vallejo Sepia ink without any thinning. We'll do this a couple times to get a nice leathery work boot brown, and our slightly warm undercoat will add to this. Once that is done and dry, we're going to be applying my favorite contrast paint, Imperial Fist Yellow, all over the gun case, giving us a bold yellow which will contrast well with our dark green. Next, we're going to be applying a dry brushing of Vallejo Metallic Silver all over the black and a decent portion of the armor to add wear and tear to our guy. We're going to be using my favorite dry brush. Click the link at the top to check out my video all about this brush if you're curious. And don't be afraid to be a little messy. I think this actually looks really cool, and there's nothing wrong with going back and cleaning up. Mind you, I am not going over the arms nor the gloves too much. Uh, we're going to want to keep those black for now. This is because we're going to be applying Vallejo model color dark gray over the gloves, the back of the helmet, and on the ridges of the arms. We're going to be nice and neat with this, and this color is excellent.
I had noticed that the metallic had actually gotten on the boots a little bit, so I decided to go over it again with a little bit more of our mixture of Elvic Flesh. I added a little bit of Ghost Grey to it, and if I had to go back, I'd use none of that. Uh, the warmer color is now gone as a result, but it still looks good. Once I was done repainting the boots, I applied Ulthuan Grey all over the upper ridge of his helmet. Now we're going to be painting the dude's face using a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone, and this works particularly well with Xenophil highlighting going over uh, the white areas using a nice thin layer paint. Just a couple times it'll work really nicely. I do go back in with a nice mixture of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone, but that'll be a little bit later, we'll get into that soon. Using Rhinox Hide, we're going to be going over the bandolier and anywhere that's going to be leather, as well as any area that's going to have any brass or goldish colors. Dark brown is a better undercoat for any kind of gold or warm metallic. Black doesn't really help it too much, in my opinion, unless you're going for a really dulled gold. But for this, we're going to be using a nice warm brass. Undercoating with Rhinox Hide is also good for ammunition. I also went over the grenades and the pouches on the side, as they're smaller and I don't really think black would really matter. I mean, both of these colors work just fine, but I figured since I had wet paint on my palette, I might as well use the Rhinox Hide. After applying the Rhinox Hide, I just took the time to apply another thin layer of Ulthorn Grey to the helmet, uh, applied another layer of Cadian Flesh Tone to the face, and I just kind of cleaned up around the under helmet using the dark gray, just to make sure that we don't have any speckling or there are any parts that we missed before. We'll be reapplying the sepia ink over the boots at this point, and we're going to apply a little bit of rhinoxide to the beard and the eyebrows. To get a nice start to his pants, we're going to be using Xandry Dust and apply this all over, and the nice white and black undercoat will be perfect for adding just a little bit of gradient for this color. Xandry Dust I find to be kind of a crumbly color if left unattended for too long, so if you run into any crumbs, just be careful and make sure to speck them off if you can. We're going to be painting his grenades really quick, and to undercoat we're going to be using Deathcore Drab on the Fragmentation Grenade, and just the regular metallic silver over the other one. Using two thin coats Spartan Bronze mixed with a little bit of metallic silver, we're going to base coat all of the warmer metallics. And this is going to be the big belt buckle as well as little details scattered across the backpack and little bits and bobs on the belt. To clean up the gun case, we're going to take our elfic flesh and dabble it over the metallic scrapes on the casing using a little sponge. This gives us a nice splattery effect and that will give us a more natural look to the gun casing. 
And once you've applied the amount that you like, you can reapply Imperial Fist Yellow and it'll look brand new. I'm now applying a metallic mixture of our metallic color and a bad and black, and we're going to be applying this around the boots just to give a nice, like, space age steel look to it. And after doing this, we're going to be applying some Army Painter light tone to the trousers just to apply just a nice bit of shade to them. Kind of a warmer shade, but not too dark. Very good for khaki colors. And now I'm taking a mixture of about 75% dark gray mixed with a little bit of our ghost gray, and I'm just applying it to these bands around the arms, just as kind of a final highlight, just to make them pop a little bit more against the black undercoat. And I really don't do a lot of highlighting with the armor on this miniature, as I think the metallic look is really nice, but I did take a nice little bit of warpstone glow and just applied it to the edges, as well as some of the flatter surfaces in kind of the middle just to make it pop out a little bit more. But overall, I would suggest just using the metallic to your advantage. I don't think everything necessarily needs to be highlighted. I think this is a very nice look in its own. After our little cleanup job, we're gonna have a little bit of fun with some of this tiny miniature tape. I don't know why, but I wanted to dick around with it since it's been sitting in my drawer for many, 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 many moons. I was unable to get it on camera, but I did apply a little bit of Army Painter Flesh Wash mixed with about 25% Caraberg Crimson, and I applied it to the face just to give our dwarf a little bit more of a rosy look to his skin. At this point, we're going to be removing the tape, and oh shit, we didn't do it right. Oh no, I, I, I didn't mean to do this. Oh, this was just a big accident. Oh. But enough about that for a moment. First, we're going to highlight all of our metallics using our metallic silver once more after it's been shaded. So just catch all the nice little edges and anything like that just to make it pop out a little bit more. Now here is a bad example of how to fix this. As you can see, I applied these two thick lines of our Elvic Flesh as our undercoat. But the thing is, with these two thick lines, we're not going to have that gradient that we had before. And you're going to see it right now. I figured I'd show you my main way of painting in this kind of video. You see, when I fuck up, I always try to improvise. And sometimes it doesn't work. So I figured I'd show you kind of the wrong way of doing things as a way of letting myself be a guinea pig rather than you. Now this is what I should have done in the first place, just simply reapplying using the sponge. And even going over the red band a little bit is actually kind of a cool way to make just a realistic paint chipping effect. And now I'm going to apply a little Blood Angels Red to this one grenade just to make it kind of a cool Resident Evil style incendiary grenade. To really drive home our rosy flesh hue, I applied a drop of cornbread to Cadian flesh tone and applied it over the bridge of the nose and his lip. 
And after doing this, I highlighted his cheeks using an equal mix of Kislev Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone. Moving on from there, we will be applying Doom Bull Brown on the raised parts of the beard. After which, we will be applying an 8-2 mix of Doom Bull with Ghost Grey. This will be specifically centered around the sharpest edges of the beard. To really drive this all the way home, we're going to be shading in the recesses of the beard with Agrex Earthshade, just to push it forward and make it pop a little bit more. Then to add a little bit of chipping to the paint on the gun, we're going to be applying a nice sponging of Rhinox Hide, just to give it a nice little dark speckling. Next we're going to be highlighting the pants using Elfic Flesh mixed with a little bit of Xandri Dust. And I really like to add this kind of nice flicking motion to any time I try to do any sort of cloth. I think giving this natural texture just using your brush is a good way to really drive it home. And it really isn't all that hard giving some practice. Continuing on, we're going to be using the Rhinox Hide sponge method on the top of the helmet. And specifically, I think this looks really good on bright colors. Just these dark chips really make it contrast well, and especially once we highlight it, it's going to look incredible with really not that much effort. And here we'll be highlighting these chips with Ghost Grey. Typically, I like to highlight the underside of the brown chips using our brightest color. I initially tried highlighting the yellow chips using Flash Gets Yellow, but it really wasn't bright enough so I mixed in a little bit of Elfic Flesh with Flash Gets Yellow. Really what I could have done is just use Dorn Yellow at the end of the day. I really like the look of the Dwarven armor, especially these little panels. So I decided to make the little dollop on his chest a big shiny candy-like red Buzz Lightyear-esque button. To contrast with the red and the green, I just decided this other button should be blue. Initially, I went over it with some blue contrast. But I didn't think it was bright enough, so I used some magic blue from Vallejo Game Color. I'm sorry you can't read it, I don't know what happened to the label on this one. I didn't do it. To kind of finish off the gun, I just decided to use some darker metallic mixed with a little bit of black ink. I thought maybe just adding just some slight shades to the side and some of the upper areas to make it look a little bit more metallic would make it pop out a little bit more. At this point, I finally just decided to use a little bit of Ghost Grey mixed with our Dark Grey on the gloves, and at this point I gradually built up the Ghost Grey to the Dark Grey, just making it pop out a little bit more and have these kind of industrial colored grey gloves. 
once we were done with that, I just kind of highlighted the top of the helmet just to give it a little bit of texture. And once we're done with that, I don't think there's really much else to do with the gray. Now we're just going to be shading with some Nuln Oil, just across all the miniature, just to get in some of these nooks and crannies to make it pop out a little bit more. I'm being a little selective with this shading. And right here, there's this little wire, and I just decided, eh, why not corn red, just to make it stand out a little bit. Now I'm going to give you a quick rundown on muzzle burn on any sort of firearm you might want to do for 40k, or miniature painting in general. This gun has a particularly large barrel, but this will serve well for us if we do it properly. So first, we're going to be taking Drakenoff Nightshade. And we're just going to apply this to the first, kind of third of the gun barrel. And make sure you get it on both sides evenly. Apply a good amount of this so it does blue the metal properly. But also use a little bit of water to dissipate it across the metal. Once this is done, we're going to do the same thing with Druki Violet. Drukai, Dretch the second, I don't fucking know, it's the same shit. Either way. Just use purple wash of whatever kind you want. And make sure it bleeds in with the blue and kind of mix it around while it's still wet. You're going to want to do this pretty quickly. And I do not have Sir from Sapia, but I do use the Army Painter Light Tone as my sepia. We'll do this at the last one third of the barrel, and as long as we get it on both sides and mix it well, your gun muzzle burn effect is complete. It's pretty easy. Mine is a little less cartoony than most, but I figured I'd just do something light just as a just as a way of easing you in. At this point I took the liberty of adding some decals, and I didn't catch it on camera because I'm planning on doing a decal special later on. To finish this miniature, I'm gonna be painting the headlamp using a little bit of ghost gray mixed with our elvic flesh. And I have already painted the eyes on the miniature, but I'm just not skilled enough to get this on camera properly without scrunching them up to my chest. And just as kind of a fun little bright color exercise, I'm going to be using light green from Vallejo model color. And I'm going to be using just a little bit of Duncan Rhodes Two Thin Coat Spartan Bronze mixed with a good amount of our silver color just to make it kind of a bright brass color. To finish his face, I just decided to use a little bit of Kislev Flesh and just basically touch the tip of his nose and just a little bit on his cheeks. And I don't really like drilling gun barrels, so I just usually paint them on. You can do either one, I just, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of a waste of time. To finish up the headlamp, I'm using Iodan Yellow mixed with just a touch of Imperial Fist Yellow. This is admittedly kind of a lazy way to paint it, but it is effective. Now we're going on to basing the miniature, and we're going to be applying Earth Texture Acrylic using Brown Earth from Vallejo. I really, really like this stuff. Filming it, I felt was a little redundant, but at the end of the day, it is just an earth paint. And now we're going to be shading that paint using a little bit of light tone from Army Painter. Don't do too much. I think this is actually a really, really subtle shade, and that's why I went with it. And after it's dried, make sure to just dry brush with a little bit of any sort of skull white. 
and I added some tufts and these little pebbles to the base, and this is where things get really interesting and over the top with some cool basing effects. Using our classic method of Vallejo pigments, we're going to be using some weathering powder, specifically dark yellow ochre. And we're going to be dusting this all around the terrain, as well as the little tufts, and his legs. And just a little bit on the gun and his hands, just to make him look like he's really been dirtied up in this environment. Once I was done with the weathering powder, I decided to paint all these little rocks with a silver tone. And then we're going to paint over it using some orange contrast to make it look like Nitro from Deep Rock Galactic. Just to really drive home the DRG themes. And once we're done applying it, and once we've painted the rim of the base, this dwarf is done, and I think he looks like a bad motherfucker. Especially paired up with the other dwarves I've painted before, I think this could be a full-fledged kill team. These miniatures are just awesome, and I really have a lot of fun painting them. Yeah, I really hope you found this entertaining, and I really, really hope that you found something useful for your future minis. I want to make more long tutorials like this so I can show off several ways of making the hobby painting life a little bit simpler while not sacrificing quality. I think it's obvious I end up using a lot of the same paints and blending them, and I think that's especially ideal for newer painters. Either way, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw. It really, really helps newer channels to give feedback. And also, don't forget to mishmash, kitbash, and make some fantastic miniatures. See ya! That was actually a pretty good catchphrase, I'll give you that. Whoa, I was wondering where you went. Where the hell have you been? I'm a can, man. How? Don't worry about it.